Chapter 17 The princess of heaven begins to suffer affliction. God absents himself from most holy Mary, her sweet and amorous sighs. The Most High, who in his infinite wisdom dispenses and regulates the welfare of his beloved ones according to weight and measure, resolved to exercise our heavenly princess with some afflictions adapted to her age and state of childhood. Though she was always great in grace, he wished by this means to increase her glory, for entirely filled with grace and wisdom was our child Mary. Nevertheless, it was befitting that she should learn by experience and thus make advancement and understand better the science of suffering, which only experience can bring to its ultimate perfection and thoroughness. During the brief course of her tender years, she had enjoyed the delights of the Most High and his caresses, and of the angels and of her parents, and in the temple, the tender love of her teachers and of the priests, because in the eyes of all of them, she was most gracious and amiable. It was now time that she should commence to know all the good she possessed in another light and by another knowledge, namely, the one which is acquired by the absence and privation of the good, and that she make use of it for the practice of those virtues which arise from comparison between the state of favors and caresses with the state of dereliction, aridity, and tribulation. The first affliction which our princess suffered was that the Lord suspended the continual visions which he had so far vouchsafed her. So much the greater was the sorrow occasioned her thereby in proportion as it was a new and unaccustomed experience and in proportion as the treasure thus withdrawn was high and precious. Also the holy angels concealed themselves from her and at the withdrawal from her sight of so many so excellent and heavenly beings which took place all at once although they did not cease to surround her invisibly for her protection that most pure soul seemed to herself entirely forsaken and left alone in the dark night occasioned by the absence of her beloved. It was a great surprise to our little queen, for the Lord, though he had in general prepared her for the coming of tribulations, had not specified their nature. And, as the innocent heart of the most simple dove harbored no thoughts and entertained no practical conclusions except such as were conformable to her humility and incomparable love, she explained all according to the same light. In her humility, she began to think that she had not merited the further presence and possession of the lost good on account of her ingratitude and in her inflamed love she sighed and yearned after it with such great and loving affection and sorrow that there are no words to express them. She turned with her whole soul to the Lord in this new state and said to him, Highest God and Lord of all creation, infinite in bounty and rich in mercies, I confess, my Lord, that such a vile creature cannot merit thy favors, and my soul in utmost sorrow reproaches itself with its own ingratitude and with the loss of thy friendship. If my ingratitude has eclipsed the sun which vivified, animated, and illumined me, and if I have been remiss in giving thanks for the great benefits, I acknowledge, my Lord and Shepherd, the sin of my great negligence. If, like an ignorant and simple little sheep, I did not know how to be thankful and do what is most acceptable in thy eyes, see me prostrate on the earth, adhering to the dust, in order to be raised from my poverty and destitution by thee, my God, who dwellest on high. Thy powerful hands have formed me, and thou canst not be ignorant of our composition, and in what kind of a vase thou hast placed thy treasures. My soul wastes away in bitterness, and in thy absence, since thou art its sweetest life, only thou canst restore its drooping life. 
To whom shall I go in thy absence? Whither shall I turn my eyes without having light to direct them? Who shall console me when all is affliction? Who shall preserve me from death when there is no life left?'